said to those Jews which believed on him, notice the word is delivered to those which believed. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? That word believe has a lot to go with it. It means trust. Are you trusting in Jesus? It's one thing just to have knowledge. I believe in the devil, but the de- you know that, that knowledge is not going to get me to heaven. A- amen? Uh, I believe in lots of things. To believe on Christ is to place your trust in him. And to those who believed, this is the word of God that Jesus gave to them. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We're, we be Abraham's seed, and We're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, I love these words, you shall be free Indeed, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. It's very obvious everybody didn't get along with Jesus. Amen? Amen. To those Jews who believed, he gave them this word. And there's always an opposition. There's always an opposing force. Satan is a real enemy. And Satan comes right back at Jesus with a contradictory word. But freedom needs to be understood. And Jesus wanted us to understand what true freedom is. God is the source of freedom. It goes all the way back to Genesis. We just completed our biblical tour of the four pillars. And and, and we saw that creation is... God made it all, and it it all was good. And God's told Adam and Eve, of every tree you can freely eat, except freedom always has limitation. Being free does not mean I can do anything I want to do. There's always limitation. I'm praying our country would come back to the rule of law because it seems... We've thrown out all the stops, all the limits, all the boundaries. Samuel Samuel Francis Smith wrote, My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Freedom of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside. Let freedom reign. As Americans, we value our freedom. Our nation was founded on that very principle, liberty and justice for all. The First Amendment guarantees. Some people question that today. I don't question it at all. I believe we need to stand in our freedoms. If we do not defend freedom, we will lose it. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, and freedom to petition the government for redress. It does not guarantee that the state has nothing to do with God, or God is eliminated from anything the state has to do. Can I get an amen and a witness? It's amazing how they turn this around. And today is a day when all of us who live in this country should stop to think about our freedom. Because as Americans, we possess rights and liberties that citizens and nations, they don't have. 
As Americans, we can assemble. As Americans, we're free to believe in any God we choose or in no God if we choose. As Americans, we have the right to speak our mind on any issue that we choose for now. Because we're Americans, we have the right to carry a Bible, pray in the name of Jesus Christ, and serve Him in the world today. And I believe we ought to thank God for our freedoms. But did you know that you can be free politically, as Celestia was saying, little did she know she was preaching. You can be free politically and still bound spiritually, and so many today are. There's a vast difference between spiritual freedom and what's called civil freedom. Civil freedom is freedom from the bond of tyranny. I did a little uh, research. I don't know what I did with it. I thought I brought it up here. There it is. Look at that. Y'all trying to hide that from me, aren't you? I got a feeling, you know, these revisionists, these his, history, uh, <laughs> these atheists that want to remove God from everything that's part of our history. And what's amazing, Washington, D.C., the very place where our government is seated, has God written in marble all over the city. And yet they say America is a nation apart from God. Ronald Reagan, in one of his prayer breakfasts, said, if we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. And I really believe that. Israel, you can look through the Bible, and I know the Bible doesn't have a chapter on America. I wish it did. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> but it doesn't. But there are principles. You can look at how God dealt with Israel, and you can see principles, and God has not changed. Amen? He's not changed at all. And there are parallels. You can see many parallels between Israel and America. For instance, let me just give you, Israel had a history very much like ours. Israel, like America had a glorious beginning. One of my favorite psalms to read about the history of Israel is Psalm chapter 80. And in verse 1, God reminds Israel, in, in the first three verses anyway, God, God reminds Israel that they are a vine planted by Him. He said, I took you from Egypt... And it's like God took the vine, and we know the vine is Israel. A amen? You're a vine. I took you from Egypt, and I planted you in Canaan. I want to tell you, America is planted by God. Divinely prospering. Their prote you know, Israel's protection was of God. But America, like Israel, has a glorious heritage, a beginning, Israel, like America, was the wonder of the world in her time, so much so that everybody wanted to know who their God was, and that's the way God was working in her. Israel and America, the wonder of the world. Israel, like America, was birthed out of bondage. Israel from Egypt. America from the bondage of tyranny of England. Both nations, would you agree, have been blessed by God. America has become a nation so glorious and so prosperous that all the nations of the world were astounded what God has done, and the same is true for Israel. So what's some of the parallels? Well, Psalm 80 goes on, and it's a psalm of crisis. It's a psalm, an Asaph psalm, one of David's musicians. Everybody argues about what crisis they were in. They had many. You think of Babylon, amen, Capt captive for 70 years. 
let me give you the one thing that is the difference between Israel and America. Israel had a promise of God that she would remain. America has no such promise. Amen or oh my. And so, these parallels are fitting. Uh, one of the things that happens in Psalm 80, and, and I'll get out of this. This is where I was last night. The psalmist says, turn us again, O God. Cause thy face to shine. Stir up thy strength and come and save us. It's a heart cry for revival. Oh, that we could hear that cry in this country once again. When God's people are called by his name. So, Jesus is our source of freedom. Look at John chapter 8 again, verse 31. Then Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Freedom comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. We're talking about spiritual freedom. I thank God for my civil freedoms. I really do. I, 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 I hate to see many of them in jeopardy today. I believe uh, November is a crucial time. Yes, I do. And I believe we need to take a stand, and we need to get out, and we need to let our voices be heard. We need to take this country back for Jesus Christ. And so, civil freedom is one thing, but spiritual freedom is so much more than important. Christ died on the cross that I might be free from sin's tyranny. That I might be free from the devil himself. How many want to get free from the devil? We deal with him every day. Every day, the devil deals with us. And many, many times it causes us to, to, uh, to be ashamed, to, to, to not want to look at Jesus fully in his face. Many times we're ashamed of who we are. Well, let me give you some good news. Jesus' blood cleanses us from all sin. So the devil's lost his voice. The devil's lost his victory for those who are in Jesus Christ. The Bible says all creation proclaims this truth, the glory of God. The Bible even says in Romans chapter 1 that those who remain lost with this evidence. Remember the declaration? We hold these truths to be what? Self-evident. What are they talking about? The very things that Romans is talking about. All these things give evidence that God is exactly who he says he is. And that God is there. And the Bible goes on and says the wrath of God is going to be revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. There is a day coming when this world will face judgment. I believe it's already begun. In Psalm chapter 19, the Bible goes on talking about this revelation of God, this self-evidence. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. You ever look up at the night sky? The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. The stars don't speak an audible voice like you hear me, but the stars have a voice. And here's the thing. It transcends any barrier of language. No matter what nationality, who they are, where they're from, where they're living, the evidence is apparent. It's the source of freedom. In John chapter 16... The truth that Jesus speaks of, God even went so far as not only to reveal it in all of creation, to make it self-evident, but God has given us His Holy Spirit to guide us and to convict us. You ever been under the conviction 
of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's ministry. What, you, you know what my favorite ministry of the Holy Spirit is? His Spirit testifies with my spirit that I'm His child. What assurance we have because of the Spirit of God. And Jesus speaks of the Spirit of God in John 16. When the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. You see, the truth shall set you free. And Jesus is the source of truth, and the Holy Spirit is the guide. Now, the Holy Spirit reveals to us the Word of God. The Bible is true, and the Bible is something we can place our trust in. I believe in the Word of God. I believe in studying the Word of God. I believe in trying to get to know the Word of God as best I can. The closer I get to the Word of God, Jesus is the living Word. The closer I get to the Word of God, the closer I get to God. Jesus is the source of freedom. He says, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So I see the source. The next time you hear someone saying, we don't need God, Or we don't need Jesus. Remember this. Essentially what they're saying is we don't need freedom. Because without Jesus, you have no freedom. Adam and Eve learned it the hard way in the garden. Of any tree you shall freely eat, but. And then Satan came along and came the fall of man. And guess what they lost? They lost their freedom. Of all the nations in the world, the ones who are free are the ones who believe in Jesus Christ. So I see the shortage. Not only do we see the source of freedom, there's a shortage of freedom. John chapter 8, they answered him, we're Abraham's seed, never been in bondage to any man. You ever met somebody like that? We in America have always been free, and we got a lot in common with that statement right there. Many, many, many many people have never seen what bondage really looks like or the worst case of it. So these Jews, they say, we're Abraham's children. We've always been free. There was a national pride. It was a sinful pride. How do you say you're going to make us free? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. I, uh, been thinking a lot about lately how it's harder and harder to get people to come to Christ in these days. It's, preaching is more difficult today than any time I've ever preached, um, what I'm talking about are results, seeing people moved to Christ. Um, I honestly, I honestly, in 30 years of ministry, I have seen the difference. I've seen times when you'd preach the gospel and you'd be in a room, uh, and lost people would, would just come running to God, come running to Jesus. How, how, how many know what I'm talking about? We've seen the difference. And the churches are so dry today, the altars are empty. And for the life of me, it, it's hard to put a thumb on it other than this, that Satan is alive and actively well in America today. And so there's this shortage of freedom, and people don't even know it. They don't even know they're in bondage. Satan is such a deceiver, they think they're free, and yet they're under the tyranny of the devil himself. And we wonder why the families are falling apart. We wonder why the government's falling apart. We wonder why the nation's falling apart. And the answer is simple, 
We need to come back to Jesus Christ. There's a shortage of freedom. One of the most pitiful and tragic delusions of this modern world is what they call the cancel culture. If you don't act the way they want you to act, they'll cancel you. You can lose your job. And you, and you know what I'm talking about. Many people are very afraid to exercise their First and Second Amendment rights in fear of losing their liberty, their freedom. And it's all because of sin. I found something else. Um, what I, I love Dan Charlin. He comes and I get his emails. And this is probably his biggest time of the year. He, he's the patriot preacher. He comes to our church a couple times every year. But George Washington, was he's considered the father of our country and the first president of the United States. I think they're probably tearing his statues down, I, I don't know, changing the names of universities or whatever. But this, this is the man. We're talking about God planting Israel like a vine and how he planted America. This is a man who went on his knees. He got alone to pray God's blessing on a little ragtag army at Valley Forge. And as he kneeled in the snow, and asked God to bless. A man came to the congregate, uh, Continental Congress. He wanted to know uh, which one was George Washington. And somebody said, it's the guy you will see who will get on his knees to pray God's blessing. We need leaders like that. We need churches like that. Abraham Lincoln, this is what he said, and, and he was talking about Washington, George Washington. He said, I leave now not knowing when or whether ever I shall return with a task before me greater than that rested upon the shoulders of Washington. And then here's what Lincoln said. Without the assistance of the divine being who attended him, I cannot succeed, and with that assistance, I cannot fail. Abraham Lincoln, 16th president, believed in God, stood, stood for the Lord. Thomas Jefferson, the one whom they claim was a deist. Or Listen to what he said. The God who gave us life, quote, the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. The humanists and the revisionists would like to come along and say we don't need God or we can walk away from God. And I want to tell you, to do that is to our peril. There is a shortage of freedom, and many people do not even know it. Scripture makes it completely clear. Outside of truth, there is no true freedom. So the third point that I want you to see, John chapter 8, verse 35. Look there if you will. 35 and 36, the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The word translated free comes from a word, an, an original word that means to set at liberty. It's the picture of a slave being delivered. And so when Jesus says, the truth shall set you free, and you shall be free indeed, it's, it's a beautiful picture of someone who is sold under sin, delivered and under the tyranny of Satan, and then he's made or she's made free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, when Christ died on the cross, he blotted out our sin. All of our sin is removed. It's the only way any of us can ever get to heaven. 
that our sin is absolutely taken care of. The Bible goes into all these areas where I've been set free. I've been liberated like a slave that's been set loose. Christ has set me free from the wrath of God. I do not have to fear God's wrath. But let me tell you something. I preach about God's wrath because those who are not in Christ, that's what they got to look forward to. We need to get to know God. Someone said, the waters of God's wrath are being held back by the dam of his mercy. And one day, mercy is over. Dear friend, of all the terrible things that's happened in this world, Nothing compares to when God unleashes his wrath. And this world that's apart from Christ is going to face God's wrath. As a Christian delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ, I've been delivered and you've been delivered. We've also been delivered from condemnation. You know what the devil likes to do? The devil likes to say, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. And he's right. There's not any of us that are good. But you know what the devil doesn't tell you? Jesus is. And Jesus has paid our sin debt in full. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. I've been freed. I've been set at free, at at liberty from God's wrath. I've been set at liberty from the condemnation that sin brings. I've been delivered from death and hell. And yes, those are real. Hell is a real place. Jesus spoke about hell. And he talked about hell fire. He talked about Satan. He talked about Eternal punishment. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. I've been delivered from that. And here's another one that I'm learning more and more about. I'd like to know more. The Bible teaches that I'm delivered from sin's power over me. I don't have to give in to it. Because Jesus is able to deliver me. He even taught us that we can say to the devil, get behind me, Satan, and he's got to go. I'm delivered from the power of sin. I'm delivered from the power of Satan. These are all all liberties that we enjoy because Christ has set us free. The span of freedom. It spans throughout all of life. And the freedoms that we enjoy as Christians, we ought to be giving thanks to God. I think Sunday mornings ought to be jubilant. We ought to be so thankful to a God who has been so good. I'll close with this. Civil freedom's good, and I, I enjoy it. And I pray that we keep it. And it costs. Many of us are unwilling to sacrifice, to make sacrifices to keep the freedoms that we take for granted. And 56 of those founding fathers stood and signed the Declaration of Independence. Five were captured by the British as traitors, and they were killed. Twelve lost their homes in the process of the war. Two lost family sons. Two had sons killed, and another 
uh, had two sons captured, nine of the 56 fought and died in the war from wounds they incurred while fighting. So what kind of men were these? Some were lawyers. Some were jurists. Eleven were merchants. Nine were farmers, plantation owners. They were men of means. And by the way, they were very well educated. Have you ever tried to read their stuff? You better have a dictionary. They signed and they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Carter Braxton saw his ships. He was a trader, and he had many ships, and he saw them sunk by the British Navy. He sold his home and property to pay his debt, and he died in poverty. General Corn Wallace had taken over Thomas Nelson's home for his headquarters, and Nelson quietly asked General George Washington to destroy the place, bomb it. John Hart was driven from his wife's bedside as she was dying. Thirteen children fled for their lives. His fields and his mill were destroyed. He returned home only to find his wife gone and his children gone. And a few weeks later, he died. They all had security. They all had value. They all had things that they enjoyed. That they, they were pursuing happiness. They, they enjoyed their right to pursue happiness. And they were all just like us. But they valued liberty. They valued liberty. Our freedom as Americans was purchased at a high cost. And I'm thankful for it. Many of us in here have served in the military. Um, I'm proud of that. My sacrifice was nothing compared to others. But I'm yet proud that I served. But let me tell you something. As high as the cost was for my civil freedom, the cost was much higher. For my spiritual. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And on the third day, he was raised again. All according to the scriptures. As the musicians come forward, if you don't have Jesus Christ, won't you be set free today? On this July 4th weekend, come to Christ. Believe and trust in him, and he shall set you free. And when the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. Let's all stand. Him I surely fell without God bless you, friend.
questions. Um, why are we where we are today? I got a feeling someone's going to be writing something soon about the rise and fall of the American empire. There is no way we can continue the course we're on, staying the way we are. No way. Unless God intervenes, unless we turn back to God, this country is set for destruction. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm just telling you, first of all, I'm just giving you a history lesson because every nation that's been our way has went has is no longer around. Secondly, I'm just giving you the word of God. And so my prayer is, what are you doing for Jesus Christ? The church is dying in America. Literally, the church is dying. We need to come back. What decision you need to make? Decisions are being made. Praise God, the altar is being used. Uh, one more line of the invitation. Commit to Jesus Christ today. Until he comes and gets us. Serve him. Do what God is calling you to do. And we'll be blessed for it. Let one more line. Sit down. Sit down. I tell you, if there's someone you know that doesn't have Christ, we ought to be praying for them. Frankie comes. Frankie, come on. Frankie has come. She, she come on, Harvey. Harvey and Laverne have been witnessing to Frankie her, caring for her, and now they bring her to church, and she loves this place. Amen. She feels the presence of God in this place. She lost her son nine years ago. Nine years ago, that broke her heart, but she, she's coming back to the Lord. All those, she says, I asked Jesus to be my Savior. I trusted in him 100%. I was biblically baptized, buried in the water, raised again to walk a new life. I'm recommitting my life. I'm dedicating my heart. I want to be part of Cove First Baptist Church. All those in favor. All right. All right. Laverne and Harvey, uh, y'all gather around Frankie and everybody come shake her hand. So uh, don't run off, Harvey. Yeah.